Pay close attention. Progress from exercise is not always fat loss, muscle gain, or enhancements in athletic performance. There are things you can pay attention to that will show you that you're moving forward. In fact, you should pay attention to all the signs that we can get a complete picture of what fitness can actually do for you. This was a game changer for clients. This is one of my favorite tips that you've done in a while because one of the, the hardest challenges as a, as, a, as a trainer and coach when you get a client is is convincing them that they're actually doing really good when they they they're so stuck on a goal like let's say lose 30 pounds yeah. right so that's like such a common i want to lose 30 pounds i want to lose 30 pounds and it's, it's all about the scale so you first as a coach have this like hurdle big hurdle that you have to get over which is explaining to them that i know that you have this number in your head that you were and you felt better than what you were now but that's not a, the main metric that we should focus on. So that's already a, a big enough hurdle mm. to even get over that. And then getting them to really be able to see the other things that are improving in their life because they're still so, even when they think they've moved past the weight thing, mm-hmm. yeah. like, okay, I agree with you. I get it. I get I get the science of explaining the muscle metabolism thing. Okay, I, I get all that, but I still want to be smaller in the back of their head. And then they're seeing things like, they're sleeping better and their sex drive mm-hmm. is better yeah. and their skin Energy's is better. Up, and yeah. people are telling them, God, you look good as with that, yeah. but the scale's not moving. And so they're like, well, I don't understand. I'm not seeing my, the results I want. And so, man, I think this is such a good tip is for people to really start to learn, to look at all the other things that exercise and eating good, uh, it impacts. Totally. Yeah, there's so many things, so many factors. And that really is like the biggest, um, part of our job as, as personal trainers is to make sure that we highlight those things because it isn't obvious a lot of times. And it's, again, a lot of these things kind of reveal themselves probably later on in the journey. Uh, but to be able to know that things are happening and, um, you know, the way, even my, my mental health, the way I'm looking at things like me personally, uh, improving myself is going to translate to a lot of different things with relationships, with work and, uh, just my overall drive to be a better person. Yeah. This is is really about human behavior. Um, to use an analogy, like if you look straight ahead, there are things within your vision that you see, but you don't necessarily perceive because you're not focused on them. A- another example would be, and I'm going to, it's going to make everybody annoyed, but you always see your nose when you're looking at something. Your nose is always in your vision, but your brain ignores it because you're not focusing on it. Yeah. All right. So what does this have to do with what we're talking about? Great. Now I see mine. Yeah. Now you can see it the whole time. That's, that's, it's, it's a big nose. It's like manually breathing. <laughs> uh, now I got to think about that. It's uh, it, because we what we focus on is what we see and all the other stuff we tend to ignore. So it's not that these people aren't necessarily getting these these results or there's, there's progress. It's that they almost they're ignoring it and they're focusing so heavily on something like the scale. So what ends up happening is they have all these ama- amazing metrics, which are going to happen. Like if you go from inactive to active, you do it properly. You go from eating poorly to eating better, and you do it appropriately. You're gonna feel better. You're gonna have better sleep. You're gonna have better energy. You're gonna have better moods. You're going to uh, you're gonna have a better sex drive. You're gonna feel less pain. But you're not going to notice those things if you're so hyper focused on yeah. the 30 pound uh, goal uh, or the goal to hit a PR or whatever your goal is. Yeah. So what's interesting to me is when I figured this out, this is how I figured it out. I would get because when I first became a trainer, I'm sure you guys did the same thing. I also would hyper focus on the goal. Oh, you want to lose 30 pounds? That's all we're going to focus on. Yeah. And I'm not going to even pay attention to this stuff because I'm going to get you the goal that you paid me a thousand dollars to hire you to, to you know get you to or whatever. I remember at one point, uh, uh, my client was commenting on something. I don't remember exactly what it was. I think it was something along the lines of like their sleep or something. And I remember their sleep was so bad before. And I said, oh, what? I said, your sleep, it was really bad before. And she stopped. She goes, oh, my God. I haven't been sleeping this good in years. She's like, you're right. The last week has been amazing. Does exercise do that? And I'm like, yeah, it does do that. I mean, it definitely improves your sleep. And I remember the shock coming from her voice that she just realized something that's been happening for the last week. And then I remembered, oh, like I need to help these people focus on all these other things because what it does is it paints a complete picture. Mm -hmm. Because here's the reality. You want to lose 30 pounds and you do lose the 30 pounds. Now what? Why do you keep exercising? To lose another 30 pounds? Like why would you keep doing this? By the way, people who do this consistently for years and years and years eventually figure this out. You ask anybody who's been consistent with exercise for 10 years. You have to. They yeah. ask, yeah. You have to, because at one point, 
the the other goal becomes so superficial, and you've already proven to yourself you can do it. Like, and what are you going to do? Keep it's so interesting that we went this direction. Right. And the point, I love the point that Justin that you made up because I literally just had this moment uh, in the last week where. Um, so I, at our house, uh, I've told you guys before our routine kind of is that I'm the one that kind of straightens up the house and keeps, cause I like it like super, super clean, like nothing out anywhere. Right. So I'm the one who does that most of the time. And <clears throat> I noticed la or I, not only did I notice Katrina even noticed because she said something to me about me, like slipping on some of the stuff. And I'm just like, Ugh. and of course a part of me gets irritated is the initial reaction. Then I realized, no, that's, that is my part of what I do. What I've already connected before is when I'm really consistent with my training, I come home with this different energy. Oh yeah, to to keep my household in order and to do that stuff. And like I don't I don't walk in the door and like oh, plop on the couch like oh long day today or whatever like that or go back on my phone or get on the computer. Right, I come home and I make my house in order and I and I enjoy that and I have the energy to do that, I have the motivation to do that. When I don't, and when I'm inconsistent with my training, that becomes inconsistent. And so I've learned to tie my consistency around exercise into being a better husband and a better father and a better homekeeper or leader in my home. And so, and cause I've already proven to myself what I could do physically body fat percentage wise, muscle wise, all stuff like that. Like that doesn't motivate me anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I, it, because it's a superficial goal and, right. and by, and doesn't mean it's not that someone shouldn't have that at one point, or I don't think there's tons of value and getting ripped and doing, there's lots of value and all that stuff, but eventually that superficial goal you don't care about anymore. And so you have to find something that is deeper, that is more important than just the way you look. And once you learn to really attach to those things, it's much easier to stay consistent for those reasons. Now, now here's how we're going to tie it together and sell it. Because the, the other half of this, the challenge with this is trying to sell this to somebody who's just so focused on weight loss that they're like, that's nice. That sounds great. Like, I still just want to lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I still got 100 pounds yeah. ago. Or yeah, so right? here's how I'm going to tie it together and sell it. And this is true. So this is 100% uh, accurate. Can you, so I'll ask the question, can you lose 30 pounds and feel worse, get worse sleep, feel like shit, make your health worse? Yes, you yeah, can. of course. You absolutely can. Yeah. Now, will you lose 30 pounds if you start to feel better? If you start to sleep better, if you start to get a better attitude, if you improve your mobility, if you improve your strength, if you improve your energy, probably. Mm -hmm. So in essence, what we're saying is the things that you should focus on, which actually give you the complete picture, are the ones that also lead you yeah. to that goal that you want. That goal that you want, that you're so focused on, the aesthetic goal, the weight loss goal, whatever, if you just focus on that, there's a very good chance you'll ignore everything else and you'll sacrifice everything else. And then here's the kicker. Not only will your health, health get worse and you'll feel worse, you won't even hit your goal. You've actually thrown it all out the window. Yeah. So, And that's that ties it together and sells it because, fine, you're just focused on weight loss. Here's how you're going to lose the weight anyway. Still do what I'm saying. But at the end of the day, uh, this, was such a, this was such a paradigm shift for my clients. This, I would say, and there's a lot of things that, that play a role, but this is probably number one in getting my clients to find, or at least figuring out the path toward developing a yeah. lifelong, lifelong relationship with exercise. When I was good, when I figured this piece out, this is when the door opened for my clients, and I said, "Oh, this is, this is exactly what I need to focus on." Yeah. And what happened was my success rate, my client success rate, went through the roof. But when I didn't figure this out, it was it was terrible. I, I wonder. Uh, what I would classify someone who's got to this place. Like, I, I mean, are you a black belt at this point? Cause this is something that I feel like I, to this day, like it's still an evolution and getting better and better. Yeah. Like it, that's a, that's a big step to get to that place. Right. Like, I think there's, I think there's a lot of steps before someone really truly yeah. can attach like their, their, cause you could say it all you want, but we're mostly driven by our insecurities you know, especially at the beginning when it yeah. comes to to yeah. body composition change and, and working out and exercise and nutrition, all that stuff like that. So it does, it is quite the evolution. So don't be discouraged if you're someone listening right now and you know you need to lose 50 pounds or whatever because you know it, your doctor's told it, you've been trying to do it. And you also are not at a place yet where you're like, oh, I can connect it to keeping the house clean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. It doesn't make you a failure no. it's at all, but that's the place you want to get to. You yeah, want to yeah. get to a place where the, the 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 reflection in the mirror, the weight on the scale, the way you look is not what is driving it's the your decision. Effect. It's the it's all the other things that 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 
health and fitness and exercise and making good healthy choices does for you besides that yeah well i think it's 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 a good visual to to look at it as almost like that white belt that's coming in like sure there may be some outliers that will get it right away and all of a sudden they just advance you know and they work their way up and you know they they get a, a black belt within like a year or two or something like ridiculous and uh you know there's some people it takes quite a quite a lot longer they have to get through and stumble through a lot of these ideas on their own and really that's why this is such an individual journey and this is like you know as trainers you're just there as like sort of this this oracle you're just there to kind of guide them wherever their mental state is like okay if you're here like let's focus on this and yeah. then like really try to just um you know drive their attention towards these things that are more beneficial to focus on uh, but it's not it's not just innate. It's not something that you just get it right away. Like no, you do have no. to work at it. I am so glad you guys use the belt ranking system as an analogy because there's more to it than what you guys are saying. And so this is actually what does quite a purple belt look like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just had to throw that in there. Yeah. yeah, you know I have one of those. Yeah. You know it's okay. So this is, it's a beautiful analogy, precisely because of the following: the belt systems in martial arts were invented later. They were invented later because people like to, uh, they like a visual of their progress, but they were never meant to show somebody reaching a destination. Martial arts uh, is a pursuit. It's a journey. It's not like a, you're there, you're done. Mm -hmm. Now the data and the statistics on this is fascinating. You can actually look this up. If you look at the stick rate or the quit rate, I should say, among white belts and yellow belts and green belts and purple belts or whatever, blue belts, purple belts, brown belts, black belts, as somebody gets better, the quit rate goes down, not up. So as they get better, they realize more and more, this is not a destination. This is just a, I'm going to, so black belts are far less likely to quit than a purple belt who is also yeah. far less likely to quit than a blue belt and so on. So what's the point with this? I'll use another analogy. Uh, there's, there's a path towards improving yourself um, and becoming a better person, becoming healthier, improving your fitness. There's a path. There's also a path that takes you in the opposite and wrong direction. What we're talking about is not, hey, look, there's the destination. Get there. You're done. No, no. It's just the path. There's, it's a never-ending path, by the way. There is no you get there. You die at some point. So that's, that's basically where you get. Now, what we're talking about is a flashlight. Where you shine the flashlight is where you put your steps. That's all. So if I'm putting my flashlight on how I feel, the other effects of exercise, my mood, my energy... I'm walking on the right path. I'm walking on the path that continues to improve me. If I take that flashlight and move it towards the path of just the mirror, just the scale, comparing myself to others, you know the rest, right? Insecurities. I'm going to walk on that path. And we know where that path leads. It leads us towards nowhere good. That's all it is. So don't think of this as a, 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 a I'm going to get there one day. I'm not there. I'll never get there. No one in this room is ever going to get there. It's just you, it's where you shine the flashlight. Now, the, That's all. the exciting and motivating point to learning to put your flashlight on these things that we're talking about instead of the, the scale, the body fat, the, the mirror reflection is that you can instantly start to win. Totally. Where mm -hmm. you can't do that. If you have a 50 pound goal or I want to look shredded, like you ain't going to see that. That's from. a long journey. Yeah. So, and, and, and the steps it's to get there are tiny. Right. And, and there's a lot of actually setbacks on the way to that long journey. But when you have goals, like I want, like when you're focused on my sleep, my energy, my attitude, making me a better father, a better husband, all these other things. Or that, the fact that I accomplished this today. Right. <laughs> when you focus on all those things, those things are like immediate. Yep. You you get a good workout in, you make a good choice of eating all day, your digestion will immediately start to feel better, your sleep will probably be better, your mood will start to increase, you'll probably have a better attitude, like your energy level, like dude, like right away you start compiling the wins. And when you when you're focused on the wins, it's really motivating to keep and who cares? Oh, the scale went back a pound or two on my goal to 50 pounds, but man, I had the best sleep I ever had. And I had the best sex I ever had the other day. Like, like you're, you're, you're concentrated on those things. You ain't tripping about the one or two pounds setbacks here and there on the, on the, on the big, goal. you know, it's a wonderful feeling. Mm -hmm. It's a, this is a wonderful feeling. I'm doing this. Oh my God. I feel good. This is great. Wow. I'm, I'm moving in the right direction. Weigh myself. What? I lost 10 pounds. Yeah. Surprise. Right. That is an incredible, it's I used to love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, Oh my God, I can't believe this happened. I've lost 10 pounds. Like, well, you're moving in the right direction. By the way, just to highlight how powerful this is, what we're saying, 
This used to happen all the time. So someone might be listening, be like, well, how do you not recognize that you feel better? How do you not recognize that you get better sleep? I'll use an even louder signal that people would ignore all the time. I would have to point out to clients that their back doesn't hurt anymore after 10 years of back pain. Yeah. Okay. We would do an exercise. Mm. They would do it and I'd be like, John, do you remember last week how much your back hurt right. and you couldn't do that? And then they go, oh, oh my God, you're right. My back doesn't hurt anymore. Dude. That's how much uh, unawareness we can have over things because we're focused so that's much how, on that's this That's how one crippling thing. it can be to totally. focus on the aesthetic thing mainly. That's how yeah. crippling it can be. You're totally. so crippled by that. You're so f focused on the scale weight or how you look that you completely ignore these other things that if you were asked in a category of, you know, top 10 things you want to feel better, be better in your life, you would list yep. yeah. pain, weakness, discomfort. Like those, I feel like a client coming in, don't even consider that a lot of times. Isn't that crazy? And it's like, it, it again, yeah, you strengthen areas of your body. All of a sudden it, it just eliminates pain and you're like, what? It, it, to me, that that's where a lot of the hook it starts to happen. It starts to really form uh, the idea that, oh, wow, this is so much more than just me trying to come in and lose weight and get shredded. Yeah, you know? so awesome. All right, today's giveaway, the RGB bundle. Here's how you can win all three programs. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on notifications. And then we'll let you know in the comment section if you win. We're also running a sale right now. Maps Anabolic Advanced is half off this month only. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. All right, so uh, since we're having fun and getting emotional here, I'm just going to stay on this little train here. <laughs> uh, so I got to I gotta uh, publicly uh, say something nice about Adam uh, because oh. I don't do it too often. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you like how I, I open that? Mm. I feel like this is going to be a shit, shit sandwich. No, going it's going to be a, this is a good sandwich. Uh, no, mm. so uh, you, my, my grandfather passed oh, away. Oh, God, don't talk about this. You're going to make me emotional. No, well, no, that's no, too no, bad. No, we can no, edit no, it out. No, no, don't go. Yeah, we have to. We're going to edit it out. Yeah, we get, I got, so my grandfather passed away about six months ago and he's uh, you know the patriarch of the family and, and we all love him it was very challenging for for all of us and adam and his wife um gave us like just an incredibly thoughtful gift and i don't even know if you realize just how thoughtful it was because it was like the perfect gift your family made me like realize that. last night which is what's gonna make me emotional yeah so he they reserved or got or paid for i should say a bench in uh, a county park here in the bay area and it says on it, um, in honor of, uh, my grandfather, Giuseppe Visconti, um, you know, and in parentheses, no, no. And now you have to wait six months for this to be made. And also they told me when it first happened and I remember like, wow. And I thought, okay, I'm not going to tell my family until it's done. Well, they got it yesterday. They sent me the picture of it and everything. And I just so happened to be at my mom's house. And I told my, you know, my mom and my aunts, I got them all on FaceTime and it was a, uh, um, it was really, really uh, touching moment. And I, I just want to say that was, and here's why it was so thoughtful. You didn't know my grandfather, but uh, he, uh, that would have been something that would have lit him up forever. Okay. Cause he would have been, he's the kind of person, if there's a bench with his name on it, he'd probably go take a walk every other day, look at it, take a picture of it and show his, uh, you know, show his friends and family. So yeah, it was a big deal. That's awesome. Oh, Katrina, deal. Katrina yeah. and I were crying last night because the family, not only did Sal's family call me and FaceTime me and then individually go around and thank us. And then they got emotional, but then all night long, I kept getting text messages from the family members were telling me how, how impactful that it was. Yeah. It was just like, Oh God, you guys got to stop sending me this stuff right now. I'm getting all emotional, which this was like almost a year old guy. I can't yeah. believe it took this long. Like, the way this came out was uh, Christmas last year. Yeah. Um, I I wanted to do something for each of you guys that I that was thoughtful, right? It wasn't about the, the dollar amount or like a cool. It was more like, oh, what, what's something that I think that each each guy would really want. And actually, when we when Katrina and I were sitting around, like Doug and Justin came to me really fast and easy, and I'm like, God, Sal is so hard because he's not a materialistic guy. He doesn't spend a lot of money on himself, and it's like what. What is something that I think that he would really value or that he would really, really like? And it was right around the same time that he had passed. And uh, Katrina and I were just saying, you know, what, what could we do for the family that's something like that? And it was actually her who was like digging around and she's like, 
what if we did like a park bench? And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, yeah. I think they would really like that. I think they would really value that. It so. spread like wildfire throughout yeah. my family because I finally told them. And so like uncles and cousins, they want to go to the people who don't even live in California. Yeah. They want to visit. It's a destination now. It's they want to, yeah, yeah. They want to walk up to the, the, the bench and take a picture on it. And, yeah. That's, and that's do all really that. Cool. My dad's I, like, we should plant something next to it. I'm like, this is so, this is so I great. can't, I can't stress what a headache it is working with the city. Oh, bro. Because, oh, I mean, it, you all probably know. You're you, like, I want to pay for yeah, this. I want to give you money. Dude, it was like, and then the follow up we deal with it all the time. Oh. Can you get me to the person who's because they they have this site that you can go to and it's and and they make it seem like it's going to be an easy process. Like, oh yeah, you can get you can have a bench made. You can do a couple of things. You can do a water fountain. You can do a bench. You can do like a shade uh, covering thing that you can have in you know at a park basically, and and you donate you know x amount of dollars to do that. And uh, so Katrina and I went through that project, but boy, getting it actually done and getting the city to I take know. action. I had, I had, we had to follow up like so many times, like, <laughs> Hey, we paid for this for this long ago. Like what's that's the other thing. That's the other side oh, of it that oh, made man. it so, uh, that made it such a nice gift. I'm like, I know <laughs> oh, the <laughs> rigmarole you got to get through the to get city. There, hey, working with this, I, and you guys probably remember this when you had your businesses, right? Cause when you're, yeah. you have your own <sighs> business, you have to do things like this with permits and whatever. And it's like, God, it was always such a, I told you guys about when I got the, my unsecured, uh, property tax bill. Did I ever tell you about this? Mm -mm. When you own a business, uh, I had my business in Los Gatos, right? I don't know if it was a Los Gatos or Santa Clara County thing. I can't remember, but uh, you get a unsecured property tax bill. So what does that mean? Property tax, you own your house, you pay property on it. You own a business, you pay an annual tax on the stuff that is in your business, like your equipment. So I know this sounds like bullshit and it is, but whatever, I have to pay this. So I had a small studio and every year I would pay a bill and the way that they would calculate the bill, it was a percentage of the value of the equipment. Okay. Well, one year I got this bill and it was like $40,000. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. And I looked at it and they had some out, some insane estimation for your of equipment. The equipment. You're like, I, I didn't mean, even I pay $40,000. Oh <laughs> bro, I had dumbbells, a squat rack, a adjustable bench and a cable machine. That's all I had in there. Mm -hmm. and bands and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what? The the work and effort it took to get to them oh, to, to fix to it, it, it cost me thousands of dollars just to get the bill down to what I'm supposed to pay. And I never got that money back that I paid to try to. Part of me is like, sometimes I feel like they screw things up on purpose. So you got to come back and pay all the fines and fees. It's so I, I asked them, how did they get this estimation? Yeah. You know what? They just guess. Yeah, they just guess. Nobody uh, came into my studio. I, I went through the same process when <laughs> I when I started to do <laughs> outdoor boot camps, which I thought would be such a simple thing to start. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I don't really need anything. <laughs> right? Wait, just, hold on. What do you got to do with that? You have to have a permit. Oh, because of the, the park. The just park. to use the park. Yeah. And like the... The for profit, basically. The work to... I think what I ended up doing, actually, I don't think I ever ended up getting my permit. I think I, what I ended up doing was saying, you know what? F it. It, it was so difficult was to, get, donation? to get to the right person <laughs> uh -huh. to yeah, give me the donation. approval <laughs> to allow me to hold these camps at the park. And I was just like, you know, it'd be better just to do it and then get the yeah. slap on the wrist because of the effort it took to I just change locations like every yeah. now and then. Yeah, I think that's what get eventually what I did kind of because they, every time I got passed to someone else, they're like, oh, they, they don't have a specific category for fitness boot camps. There's like, yeah. it's like one of those things where it's like, there's categories of things that can be held at a park and like boot camps, what at this time wasn't one of you them. You could say it's a worship service since that's that tax free. And we worship, you know, we, we, I know. Oh, can the we body. talk about that for a second? What? Okay. So there's this video that I was watching. This guy was breaking down. Basically, Kardashians, you know, they have a church that they've um, basically like haven't like I, I want to say built, but they've they've um, aligned with and basically and really? they have they have a preacher. So who uh, they recruited, uh, I don't know if it's Chloe or whatever the hell her names are. One <laughs> one of them got married, right? And so uh, the, the yeah, mom- I, call, I called the wrong one the other day. Remember when I said- <laughs> I don't I care. It was hot. I was about actually talking about the dad. any of people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. So the mom is like, yeah, the mastermind business yeah. lady, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so basically she found- uh, one of these these preachers that that uh, lost his license to to um, to preach, and and got him to to do the wedding, and this was all like a master plan to then create this church, which then literally is is a tax shelter because you know 
people can go in and they, they have mandatory donations of 10% for tithing, which then goes to the mom. And so let's say the kids want to like donate all this money to the church. And then that goes they through, it, it basically it goes-, goes to the mom. The mom gives it back to the kids. And again, this is, this is like, uh, maybe, you know, maybe it's not like totally confirmed, but this is like some kind of a scheme. That's very, you know, that, that does remind me of the, the new mind pump church that we're starting. Here. Yeah. I was <laughs> going to say, why are mind we in on this? Did you guys, are you guys caught up on, on the righteous gemstones yet? No. Yeah. Oh, oh you are. No, yes. It was not. so good. Wasn't it so good? So is this is yeah, a real thing. Really Doug, good. Doug pulled it up. Chris founded the California community church in 2009. It was previously yeah. known California as the life community change church. church. And it's lead pastor is Brad Johnson. Huh. Yeah. Well, right underneath yeah, that, what does it say? It says suspicious fans, fans think Chris Jenner founded a church for what? For money laundering, probably. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah probably. Be, I mean, it's because it's yeah, because it's tax free. Wow. So I mean, <laughs> I, 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 there's I mean, loopholes. What, what percentage of people try and cheat their taxes? Well, you know what the stats are on that? I would say it's a massive number of people. Right. Right. And so. I, I don't think I I don't think I judge somebody so much for doing that, but when you bring in God and church, exactly, it, that's Ooh. like you're asking for it. Listen, <laughs> man, you're like lightning is yeah. coming your way. Try lady. a different. You should do a different way. That's not, that's not God's way. like, oh, you want to keep your you, own you, money? You, that's cool. Yeah. Oh wait, you're using my name to do it? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's not yeah, cool. no, we're not gonna I be know. okay. I, you know what I used to so. love I, I, yeah. when when people tell me how much how great it is, it's like we need to pay more taxes or whatever. I say, you know, there's a there's a line on your tax code that like when you get your taxes, you pay more if you want. You can actually voluntarily pay more. Do you ever do that? <laughs> Nobody does that. <laughs> Nobody gets their taxes and goes, you know what? I'm going to give more. Yeah. To well, the let's let they somebody spend, else try and figure out how to spend my money. Yeah, they spend it really well. Yeah. I like the way that they spend this money. I, yeah. You know, someone was breaking down one time when you factor in like uh, like the, the taxes that you're talking about with the property, with the sales tax, income, with the income yeah. tax, like the amount of times like a dollar is taxed. for the, It's like crazy. Did you what, know the average person... Uh, the average person who pays taxes works, I believe, f- four months out of the year for the government. So if you did the math, oh my god, think of it this way: the quarter. And now people, yeah, and now people get really weird oh. when this is it's presented this way, and I understand why. It's not exactly the same thing. Technically, it is, but it's not exactly the same thing. But you're literally forced to work for someone else uh, through threat of uh, jail or mm-hmm. violence or whatever, mm-hmm. right? So you're literally, it's like you work for me, and if you don't, you're going to jail. There's a word for that, and uh, it's like three to four months out of the year. So three to four months out of the year, you're working mm-hmm. for someone else, and it's not for you. You can't do anything about it. God, wow. it's that much, huh? It, it, yeah. Well, I mean, if look, at, well, if, if you, you get twenty five percent taxes, exactly. so it's actually more than that. If you pay forty percent income taxes alone, that's yeah. going to be forty percent of your time. Yeah. You know, but you add yeah. everything else, and I know it's an interesting. You know, people should be thought. paid. They should do all their taxes up front at the beginning of the year. The company should collect all the taxes from all of their income for the first four months. So the first four months, people take home nothing. And then they get their money at the back half of the year. They'd really feel (laughs) the pain then, right? So now you really know what you're paying. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. I know. That was... (laughs) That would suck. <laughs> it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be so bad if we had a way more efficient government. I mean, it'd be way, it wouldn't be so bad. If right. It if you actually, it was transparent. You could see where all that money yeah. was being hey, allocated. Listen, you on, could guys. see they like just, communities being uplifted. Yeah. Cut them, cut them some slack. I mean, they, 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 they lost a billion dollars. They? they don't know where it went. Yeah. It's just bad. little minor uh, accounting uh, errors. Know, yeah. Uh, anyway. For billions of dollars. Yeah. Hey, did you guys, did you guys, uh, you guys saw the day in the life I did and I went to my, yeah, pa- yeah, my, yeah, yeah. my parents' house yeah, and yeah. filmed it? Oh, Oh my God, I had so much fun doing that. I actually yeah. wanted to see that. I want to see that drawing or painting oh, of yeah. Jesus in person. It's words. So it's a, it's a, uh, what is like, it? Are called? they written really tiny? Is that what Correct. it is? Yeah. Wow, you couldn't tell on the camera. So, so it's the entire, so this is at my mom's house. It's the entire New Testament written, but then the way that they, and it's very, 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 very tiny. You have to use a magnifying glass to read it, but it's there. Wow. And you, but you, the way that it's shaded, it's a painting of Jesus. So, and it's in the underneath it. It says the word becomes flesh. I think that's that's so cool. Main. Yeah, and I th- yeah. it's a it's a replica of a famous uh, painting or whatever. Oh, so, I didn't know. Yeah, that. so my parents. Oh, that. that's yeah. cool. But yeah. it was funny because I was filming the house, and um, my mom is just she's in the background, you know. Show, show, wait, wait, don't show it. I didn't show put, this. I didn't put the olive oil on it yet. Put, <laughs> so there's one scene where I'm showing the, uh, my mom made panelli. This is a- Is that a dessert? Is that what that no, is? No. So oh, this is a, a, dessert. a traditional Sicilian street food. And it's made with chickpea flour 
They turn them into these square, like little pancake looking things. And then you fry them and you're supposed to eat them uh, with lemon, salt. And oftentimes people will put them in bread. Oh, anyway. interesting. And you buy them on the street. It's a very famous Sicilian I've never street had that. So Yeah. So if you go like into like the, the squares and Sicilian towns, especially at night or whatever, people are selling food, you'll see panelli. So she made them the other night and then she rewarmed them up for me because she had saved some for me. Mm. So first off, she's like, if you're going to film, you make sure you tell them that this isn't fresh, that you rewarm them. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, I then, know. and then while I'm filming it, you see her slide the bread next to it. <laughs> Show the bread. Show them the bread. <laughs> oh, I love that. I, lo I love seeing too, like all of the, uh, the fruit trees and love. the vegetable. Like uh, Courtney just got kind of a little bit into it, tip, dipping her toes into it, but like to bring all that into the salad, to bring all that into like dinners Dude, like you, it's right there you grow it it's for i don't know there's something totally oh, different I you guys I thought my, I, I want my wife to eat uh, like i love so that bad. you I guys so thought bad. i exaggerated that okay so this is a typical yeah you got like everything san jose there. backyard it's not like oh, yeah, an it's acre. small it's, it's very just small. a little backyard yeah, it's very small oh dude it's, it's my packed. dad turned yeah. all of it except for a square of grass in the patio area where we have sunday dinner all of it is like Something you could eat. Yeah, <laughs> to eat. something. Yeah. Oh, and he loves now it. Now, there's man. that's a lot yeah, for just great. him. So I imagine you guys probably give a lot to your family. Is that what they do? They'll give, yes. They'll give it. Because that's, so, that's a lot for just two oh, people. Bro, my, so Jessica gets annoyed because, well, first off, the, our, my culture is that they will feed you and give you more than you ask for. And they're <laughs> insistent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm used to it. I get it, right? Yeah. It's just like, my mom will say, do you want some? No, I don't. I'm going to hear it 15 more times. And she's going to follow me around. Like, it's just whatever. If you're not used to it, it can be annoying. It's like, I thought I told you no, you know, yeah. four times. So my mom and dad will be like, hey, do you guys want, you guys want some persimmons? No, nah, we're cool. We end up throwing them away. What if we just give you five? No, no, no. I, I don't want any, you know, <laughs> with three. What if we give you three? I'll give you three. <laughs> and then on the way out, my dad still, will show, still no, no, it. he'll show up oh, with a bag. Forget, don't forget this. He'll yeah. show up with a bag as yeah. you're leaving and open your car door. No, hey, just, if you don't want them, throw them away. Put it in the door. Yeah. As you drive away, so yeah. this is what they do. <laughs> yeah. So we always leave with like yeah, way my too much. Do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's that's always funny. like that. It's so good. I know. So that's, that's, uh, that's so but yeah, I, I had the my the green bean. My dad grows these long um, green beans, and they're so good. My mom will boil them, and then olive oil and a little seasoning. Oh, it's the best, man. So yeah, I just yeah. crushed. Yeah, we had some lamb shank and that. It was a good time. So, so I, I've been so excited. It's not often that I get excited about one of our commercials that we do. What? But what? I have been so impressed with uh, the Eight Sleep. Oh, yeah. So first of all, I want to start by saying that I have nothing bad to say about Chili Sleeper Uller. Like I've talked about that as being like life changer for me. And like, it's been, it's was amazing. Right. Unfortunately they went out of business and so they're no longer selling their product or I believe even their customer service and stuff. So unfortunately they didn't last and I don't know, probably financial, something didn't, didn't work out, didn't, uh, didn't do well, but the product was good. Right. So I never had any complaints and I had people tell me in the past, like, we have friends that all have it that like uh, uh, Michael Trenow has it, uh, Brendan has it, like a couple other friends of mine. They're like, oh, you gotta try eight sleep. I'm all, oh, dude, the Uller's amazing. Uller's amazing, it's cool. I don't need, you know, whatever. So, like, why would I go do that when we have a partner already? Of course, that all went south. And then eight sleep calls us up. We take them on. We have their stuff for a little bit. It takes a while to finally get it over on the bed. I get on the bed. L uh, last time that we talked about it was when I just first got it on there. So now I've been using it for almost a month consistently. And holy shit. If I were to compare, I would say it's like this. You were saying the horsepower on it or whatever. Yeah, the, the I would. I would yeah. say the the Uller Chili, like that 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 brand is like the Mercedes. It's a it's nice. I got nothing bad to say about a Mercedes. Like it's a Mercedes of you know bed cooling systems. The Eight Sleep is the Rolls Royce. Like it is the horsepower. It is dead. You cannot hear it. It's silent. It gets me. So the Uller would would cool down. I I told you before. I I put it on two hours before, and it would keep me cool through the night and it was amazing the eight sleep will get me so cold that i have to like turn it off <laughs> what's amazing about so you have this to, so it's it just gets really cold stronger yeah. bro and and so it the Uller always like would would uh it would feel my body's temperature and then it would it would get me cool enough to where i could sleep really well where this i actually have to adjust it so it doesn't get me so cold it wakes me so up so it doesn't have to fight all night oh it's, yeah oh, wow. it is not overworking to do that the horsepower on it and then it comes with this thick mattress topper pad where the other one i could kind of feel this the the lines that were in mm -hmm. it which it wasn't like bad or uncomfortable and didn't bother me 
but this thing has like this mattress pad and the whole thing gets cool. Have you, have you messed with the, uh, I don't know if it's an app that it comes with where it measures. No. So this is, I just, so when we first got it, I got it going right away. Uh, and so I didn't wait for, uh, eight sleep to send over our, our free app. Cause that app caught. So the, so what they do for the people that buy this, you can, you get the whole setup after purchasing it. But if you want all the crazy cool metrics and the adjusting of it, like, so it, it's a, it's a smart bed. Mm -hmm. So it actually learns, like it starts to, it, so it scores your sleep like your aura ring does. So it scores your sleep and it starts to learn like, oh, when it gets this cold, he sleeps better. When he gets this warm, Right, so it's individualized. It's, so it, That's so crazy. it manually crazy. adjusts That's crazy. to you until you start scoring like hundreds. Yeah. So it just keeps adjusting. That is to, insane. And it figures, so I haven't even used that. At, I'm just manually doing it right now and it's amazing. Wow. And so I got, and I have the code to do it. So probably the next time we have. So it's got like an algorithm. It picks up your yes. sleep habits and it. Yeah, because it, yeah, it, it scores it. it. So it's really easy. Wow. Yeah. And it starts to see like how you're, when it hits certain that's temperatures. Gotta be, how, that's got to be. Game it's cool. It is. It's really cool. You have yours on? Yeah. So I, I just plug it in and, and, and let it go. I haven't done the, any of the app stuff yet either. And I'm like super curious about all that, like how you can utilize like all that data and whatnot and how it like learns you. But yeah, dude, for me, it's been like, uh, because it's the summer and uh, I don't have to turn my AC on. That was a big battle. Like we, we were having for a while. Cause I don't know why, but like, I think, um, uh, like the way we were raised, like, so Courtney's similar in the house. Like it was like the, her parents, especially were like never, ever, ever going to like have AC on. They had it, it, it broke one time and then they never fixed it. And was like, nobody could ever oh uh, use it. Right. And so it's like, you just, it was like this thought of like, this is wasting money or something. And so like, every time I go to turn it on, she's like, really? It's like, you know, just open the windows and we're going to be fine. Like we're always battling over that. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, well let's see. Like, I'll, I'll compromise and so I, I used the eight sleep and it was just like oh my god dude this is so cold and like <laughs> like i don't even need anything else wow. so this is what I've been, I've been playing with this since we we've got it right and like i have like i'm normally even when with you had the uler i had to still keep the ac on to, so it didn't rise above like 70 degrees because still if it gets really hot in there and then the, I, I my bed's not freezing i'm gonna wake up but what I've been able to do, and I've, and I've tested this, where I so sixty seven is what I used to keep the AC at. That's why I keep the AC at when I'm when I'm home. 68, 69, 70, 71. I just did this seventy two. So I can leave the AC and only kicking on if it gets hotter than so. Which in the Bay Area, it never gets hotter than that at at, Not at, night. at yeah, nighttime. Night, yeah, yeah. So. We and this is how I was selling it to my buddy who was like, Oh my god, this is kind of expensive, bro. Three almost three thousand dollars for this whole setup. I said, Yeah, but I don't know what, how long, how much you run your AC, but I know how much my bill is yeah. when I'm running it through it the night up. like that. And so I guarantee you that the temperature that I can keep it up at you'll probably make the money back in a year or two. It, it, for sure in a year. Mm -hmm. Within a year's time. I mean, our AC bill will get over eight hundred dollars for the for the month. So me being able to shave that off, I guarantee you I'm saving a hundred to two hundred bucks, you know, for the month. You do that for a year's time, and now it's justified yeah. the pay just because. Yeah, of especially that. you guys. I, I, oh. I <laughs> sharing We're a hotel polar room bears, with you, dude. Monkeys. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are just freezing. <laughs> every I need time. it, man. Yeah, I need the, it cold, the, dude. The few times I've shared a hotel room, I don't think I've shared one with you, Justin. Maybe once, but with Adam, I have a couple Here times. We have. Come on, man. and you he'll don't remember. With, <laughs> I'm offended. <laughs> Stop. Dude. Not memorable. I remember that thing I did. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Uh, he was so kind. No, it was. Uh, it was with. It's with Adam. I remember specifically because he'll get up in the night I'll and he'll blast it and I'll be like Ugh. yeah I yeah. have to have it I have to have and it I'm saying I'm, you know I'm like I'm not gonna fight this I'm just gonna yeah. bury myself in the sheets yeah we're, just, I mean, we're a better fit it's cool sure. I mean I I've been itching cuddle. to tell you guys yeah. about it on the show so I'm excited that that was today yeah. that we finally got to talk about it because it's it's, it's awesome and it's, I again I got nothing bad it's, to say really if you got the chili the Uller, like yeah. those things are yeah. amazing right so it's it's so cool but Dude, boy, I, this thing I gotta bring forth the speculation earlier we're talking about how exercise is a journey you keep learning and stuff like that and I just never stop learning Learning. And what I'm realizing now is that as I've gotten older, this is an interesting speculation. So I used to think, I have a different perspective now. I used to think as you got older, you, you trained with less volume and intensity because you don't have the same ability to recover and heal. Okay. You don't have the same, uh, like you're not as resistant um, to the damages from that kind of stuff, right? Um, as you as you are when you're younger, there's some truth to that. 
but I think there's more to the story. What I'm starting to realize, and I, and I wonder if this is because, definitely as I'm getting older, but I think part of it has to do with the fact that I've been working out for so long. Yes, I need less volume or I can tolerate less volume, but more so I do better in terms of progressing with less volume. In other words, I need way less than I did when I was younger to move forward. And I'm playing with this right now in a very interesting way. So like I've brought my strength training down from six days to five days to four days, now down to three days. Now that doesn't mean I'm not active on the other days. So mm -hmm. for you know people watching, like, do you only work out three days a week? No, I, I still come in here and I'll do things that are active just to, for my health, but I'm only lifting three days. That's it. Okay. And it's not full body three days either. It's still, I'm hitting each body part once a week. This is like the lowest volume and frequency I'm training a long time. Yeah. And I'm progressing. Yeah. I'm getting stronger and I'm realizing I need less to progress. And I actually progress better with less. This is an interesting thing that I'm noticing with myself as I yeah. get older. Would you say uh, I've noticed the same thing? It's, it's, I don't know if anybody's, they probably coined it as like muscle maturity, right? It's almost like you're, uh, you've established this this base and you've put all this work in over the years uh, to the point where like your body just it it, it responds it, to way less it, it just knows like okay like the, I'm getting the stimulus and so therefore like this is a priority and I'm able to keep and retain muscle a lot easier it's it's, it's weird because it's not it's more than that I actually am progressing faster. Okay. And I feel better with less. Yeah. And it's less than I thought. That's the crazy thing. Huh. Literally, this is what I'm doing. No joke. I'm doing six sets per body part per week. That's like nothing. Yeah. I, I mean, that's nothing compared to how I would always train. Remember, I've been consistent. It's not like I'm a beginner or anything like that. Right. So I'm literally like Monday I did – and I'm experimenting. So Monday I'll do three body parts. Wednesday I'll do three body parts. Friday I'll do three, uh, a few body parts. I'm only hitting everything once a week lower sets, and guess what? I'm getting stronger, and I'm progressing, and I feel better. So I mean, it's wild. I piece this together mm. over the last couple of years for sure, and I wish someone would have communicated this to me when I was younger because I always thought it would just get harder and harder as I got older. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, you get older, and you start to have joint pain and issues, and you got other responsibilities, and it's like, but I better stay fit and good-looking while I'm young because it's going to yeah. just, like, diminish as I get older. But the truth is the, the work and the effort that has to go towards lifting – um, is way, way, and I think there's, I think there's a, a bunch of things that are at work here, right? I think your muscle maturity point is there. Yes. I think your wisdom around what's most effective right, mm, is there. That's also, true. That's technique true. is super sharp. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think Great you, points. you, you know exactly how to do that. I think over years too, you've refined, you know, getting better at your sleep, making better food choices, like balance in other aspects yeah. of your life, reading when you have high stress, knowing how to start to. So I think there's a lot of things that are at play here, but boy, uh, I wish that was sold to the, young. if you're listening and you're young or you're early into getting into lifting weights, this is the exciting thing is that it actually gets easier. It gets yeah. easier to stay fit. It gets easier to stay strong if you've been consistent for a so long period of time. I have a theory around this. I don't have any scientific evidence yet. I'm going to go look for it, but I don't, I don't have anything yet I could cite. This is just a theory, but I'll, I'll bet money that I think I'm on the right track with this. Here's what I think that is happening because everything you're saying is true. Everything we're all saying is, is true, but there's still something else. It's strange that, that, that's, that's happening here. And I think I have, uh, I think I know what's going on. So epigenetics is your genes abilities. So you have hard, your hard genes, and then you have the fact that your genes can express themselves one way or another, depending on your lifestyle. That's epigenetics. And over time, you can actually train your genes to be more like something else than how they are. So it's not set in stone, in other words, right? That's kind of how epigenetics works. So I think what's happening is through the years of training, I have trained my body to become more responsive and more sensitive to muscle building and strength building signaling. I think over the years, I've actually trained my genetics to become better at responding to the stresses that strength yeah. trains. So this when I'm young, my body's more resistant to the muscle building signal. Well, because I've been doing this for 
30 years with mm -hmm. consistent exercise, I've trained my body to become more sensitive to that signal. So now when it first gets it, it responds because it's been there so many times before. I mean, I think that's exactly yeah. what we're all saying. You're just yeah. taking it down to the cellular level. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah, that's yeah. what there's something going on. It just responds. On that yeah. level yes. that your body is just, it, but I mean, it, it's not communicated that often. No. I, I don't remember hearing it when I was younger. I remember thinking that like, oh, again, I got to stay fit while I'm young because who knows It's where not I'll even, it's, here's the crazy part. It's not muscle memory. People are like, oh, that's muscle memory. No, no, no. I hit a PR. Yeah. I hit a PR in, in deadlifting uh, like a few months ago uh, with training with really low <laughs> training volume. Yeah. And I'm getting that pretty damn close with other things. And uh, and I'm 44. Yeah, amplifying that signal. Well, it, this is why I remember when I asked you, this was like a while back. I think it was before you even had your son when I was telling you, like, do you think that your your DNA when I'm passing off? Yeah, you've yeah. Pa like, because you're a different man with this child than you were now obviously you have a different partner too so there's a lot of things that yeah. play but i do think that you you if you believe that you've changed that in yourself why would that not potentially impact uh, in an offspring uh, mm -hmm. also because you had about a different point in your life so i would think that that would happen yeah it's yeah. weird it's almost like um you know you are subjected to a particular type of stress you learn how to adapt to that stress you do it so often that then when you become wise to it or you learn it, when that stress presents itself, you adapt right away. And I think that's what's yeah. happening. I have to talk about, since you brought up adaptation yeah. and stress, uh, the water beetle, you guys. What? <laughs> this, this particular insect is like unreal. It's the most resilient uh, insect I've, I've ever heard of. So it's, its main predator is a frog. And it's it literally has the ability to be eaten and travel all the way through the the intestines the digestive tract all the way through make it all the way till it like poops it out and then it survives what it it can it can it can just survive being eaten alive wow so a frog will eat it and poop it out and it comes out alive yeah how no terrifying way. isn't that crazy That's and terrifying. you see this video and it's just like <laughs> it's it's gross it's like it just looks like the frog's taking a dump and it's this beetle, and then it's just like, I'm free, dude, and it just takes off. That's terrifying. Yeah, so it has some kind of like weird film over it um, that allows it to protect it uh, as it's traveling through this this journey of, of digestion. See, so now what trips me out is like- 90% when, when you, when survive you, being eaten. 90%? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Like, so what's really crazy about this, when you talk about like how things evolve and, and adapt and get to that point, like why hasn't everything else that that gets eaten adapted like this? What is it about the frog eating the beetle and the beetle that makes it Well, there's so different pathways to surviving. Like one might be that a beetle adapts uh, a bad, ta <clears throat> bad tasting poison on its skin or right. it adapts and gets claws to fight back or it runs fast. But in this case, it's like... Yeah. Well, uh, we'll just let ourselves yeah. be eaten and survive. Yeah. Thank God the frog doesn't have teeth, I guess. That's, wow. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, How terrifying. Imagine if that happened with the food we ate. Imagine that. You eat it. You poop <laughs> it, it out. It just comes out. It just like oh runs away. God. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> come back. I need yeah. your nutrients. Listen, you yeah. need to chew your food. Why, Dad? <laughs> Trust <laughs> me. Chew the fuck out I, of it. So, oh, I, so, so you would think then the frog is getting nothing from yeah. that. I would say Yes. Yeah. Not nothing. And and so then, why would the frog continue to to eat those beetles? Is that because ten percent of them might get just maybe yeah, twenty percent yeah. of the time they get. To, oh, I guess you're right. You're so yeah. If it's not a hundred percent, so there's still, maybe the beetle does something for the frog as it goes through. Uh, hey, yeah, clean it up. And I'm sure there's other right. beetle ver what if, hey, what versions was, that don't. What if it was more like a synergistic relationship? Then you don't even realize it. Yeah. Oh, it's like, like you know cleaning how like, them out. Matter, like fish yeah. come in, like shark, like little mm. small fish will come in and clean the teeth of other fish. What if it was something like that where they're actually coming through and that it's may actually be true? It's, it's doing actually, an enema. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's like, like two, frog two frogs enema. talking to each other. Man, I haven't pooped in like a week. I'll go eat a beetle. <laughs> oh, yeah. It'll get it right. Go ask out, get Tom the beetle. He'll. <laughs> well, he's, the beetle. he's amazing. Clean you right out. He's amazing. He fixed my ass. He's like one time. <laughs> she didn't poop for a month. She yeah. ate that beetle. He pushed it. <laughs> think about that. That's it disgusting. could be like a synergistic relationship versus like a predator one, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it could be. Uh, hey, Justin, wild, you watched yeah. uh, Oppenheimer, right? No, I didn't. I was going to ask you oh. about it, actually, because uh, I was curious it. if it was any good. Yes. Or... Okay. Yes, it's so good. Really? It's so... Okay, so you know what's interesting is... So my son, my oldest watched it first, and yeah. he's like, you got to watch this, Dad. It's so good. So I went to the movies, a little side note, by myself. I've never done that before. Have any of you guys ever gone to movies by yourselves? I used to do it a lot. Really? I yeah. have a few times. I actually yeah. enjoy right before it. Before we started Mind Pump, I was on a kick for like four or five years there where I used to go to the movies. Just by yourself? All the time. So I hate, 
hate, hate shout doing... out to a Pee Wee Herman doing that, but uh, <laughs> uh, wow, don't, don't do his. That's uh, not what I was version, doing. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> sometimes you got to put things in your own hands. You know what I mean? Sometimes Pee Wee Herman. Yeah. No, I uh, I hate doing anything alone. I hate it. I just there's something about being alone. I don't like it. So it's this exercise that I'm trying to do. Not to go into too much uh, detail, but I'm trying to do things on my own to try and be comfortable with quiet time or whatever. So I went to the movies by myself and I'm like, I'm going to watch Oppenheimer. The movie ends and the theater's silent. It's one of those movies. Oh, wow. Where when it's done. It's too serious. You, no, you could tell everybody was affected. Like it ends when everybody just sat there for like, yeah. <laughs> like, like a minute, you know, before anybody got up. And oh, was, interesting. Yeah, dude, it's that. Oh, wow. So it's obviously the true story of the lead physicist in the Manhattan Project, the de development of the nuclear bomb. Yeah. It's so relevant today. Oh, wow. it's so relevant. Have today. they compartmentalize everybody no. to work on? Well, that's all into that. That's or? all what happened. Yeah. I didn't realize how many incredible physicists were a part of it. Uh, Fermi mm -hmm. was a famous Italian physicist was a part of it. Mm -hmm. Einstein uh, yep. was, he, you know, they asked him questions. He wasn't actually in it, but he was alive during the time. Well, that was like the start of like the idea of how they were able to yeah. figure it out. Well, so what's the reason why it's so relevant is as you're watching this, they're all. They were all very aware of that. That they were about to create a mm. incredibly destructive force. Like they all knew. You and and the and they and this is all pretty factual. I mean, there's Oppenheimer later on became this massive activist against nuclear pro proliferation. So after the nuclear bomb was dropped, he had nightmares about about it. Essentially, oh. and he's, he wasn't a perfect sure man. It haunted him. Yeah. Yeah, forever. but he would go and speak out and try to influence the nuclear, uh, you know, commission and say we need to like not do this anymore. He didn't want to create the hydrogen bomb, which is a much more powerful version of the atomic bomb. But anyway, as they're doing this, all these physicists know that they're about to create something terrible. And in there's, there's scenes in there where they're like, they don't want to do it. And they're like, but the other guy's doing it. So we have to. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, that's AI. Yeah. That's happening this right is, now, dude. This is always the justification. Every science, like all the scientists working on AI right if now. If they're doing it, we got to do it. A lot of them are like, we should not be doing this. But what they're all propelled. Yeah, better us than somebody else. Yes. Right? That's kind of the attitude. Jonathan Page out talks to us about, uh, talk, uh, refers to this as agency. Mm. He's like, there's this agency driving us. He goes, we all know we shouldn't be doing this. And yet we are. Yeah. He's like, we're being driven by this agency. And the way we describe it is the other guy. Wow. We got to do this because the other guy's going to do it. Mm. So as you're watching it, I can't, I couldn't help but be like, oh, damn it. It's happening again. Oh, you know? man. Yeah, well, I actually secretly brought that up to bring up kind of a, a, a messed up story. Uh, this guy that um, donated his mom to a uh, Alzheimer uh, Institute like in Arizona. You mean after she died? After she, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Should have specified that. Yeah, it was her body yeah, after she, she died. Like it was. <laughs> Here's my mom. She's <laughs> Here she yeah. is. She's a remember on her. Well, <laughs> oh, well, it gets more messed up. Okay? okay. So basically he did that under the guise of like, oh, this is going to help people, you know, and, and that, that center in Arizona actually ended up selling her to the military for bomb testing. How do they the test the body? Oh, what do they just blow her up? Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Isn't that awful? Like, yeah. can you imagine? Like, your mom? Yeah. <laughs> oh, terrible. Like, how I'm messed sorry, up mom. is that? Yeah. Obviously, he didn't know the second step, right? He he basically donated the first step. No, he like, donated oh, it wow. with the the assumption that they were going to use it to help people, you know, within the Alzheimer community, and the and they. I'm sorry, it's just fucked up yeah, story. I, that I'm like, I just couldn't wrap my brain around that. Like, what what would you? How, how would you like reconcile that? I don't know. I would feel so terrible. I, have you guys heard the conspiracy around Marilyn uh, Monroe? Mm -mm. When she died, her body, they couldn't account for, I don't remember how many hours afterwards. And they <sighs> speculate that, yeah, that, that people took the body and oh, really? My God. Said, yeah. Wow. Whoa. Yeah, really? wow. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. I've never heard that story. Yeah, that she, that the body was just like unaccounted for, for like hours and hours and hours. And then, yep. Oh, my God. I know. Oh, my God. Yeah, we went in a dark yeah. turn there. <laughs> hey, yeah. I started You started it, dude. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> Mom's getting blown up by bombs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's pretty bad, I'm Justin. sorry, dude. I'm a, I have uh, a dark sense of humor That's sometimes. Terrible. That's terrible. I anyway, I wanted to touch on a, a subject. I saw a clip. Where was the clip? I want to say it was Max Lugavere's podcast where they were talking about how calories are all not equal. Um, and this is in reference to the, you know, like the calories in versus calories out. Yeah. And they made it, we've made this point before. And it's very important. I think we need to stop placing so much value 
on calories from an energy perspective in the sense that one calorie in and one calorie out is homeostasis. If I burn more, I lose weight. If I you know eat more, I, I gain weight. I think it's more important to focus on what makes up those calories and how they make you feel. Because how you feel is what drives whether or not you overeat, right. whether or not you undereat, whether or not you feel good. And that was the point that they made on it is that it's like, yes, you know, calories are a unit of energy, but they make you feel a particular way. And if you feel always like overeating and you always feel crappy and you always feel like you're in a bad mood from what you're then, then they're not equal and they're going to drive you to make decisions and choices that aren't going to help you. Yeah. What do you think it is that drives the the people that are in the fitness space to push that message so hard? Because think of the average fitness fanatic in the fitness space. They have such a dysfunctional relationship with food that to them, food literally is energy. Mm. They can literally disassociate and be like, I just eat these calories, these proteins, this food is fuel. Yep. I will just move forward no matter what for whatever reason. So they communicate it to people like everybody's like they are. That's what mm -hmm. I think at least. Yeah, yeah. I, I wonder that if it's if, if the origin of it is tied to the supplement industry. Oh, they promote it for sure. I, yeah, because I feel like when you really unpack, like, I don't know, maybe 90%, I'm just going to throw a number out there. So it's probably somewhere close to that, I would argue, uh, of protein bars or basically glorified candy bars. Oh, yeah. Candy bars with yeah. ten more grams of protein in yes. it. Yes, yeah. I mean, just wedged in there. And so, if you are going to promote health and fitness, and you're going to make the argument that that is something that would be considered healthy and good for you, then you got to lean on the calorie as a calorie thing and focus on the macronutrient as like the primary thing because it really because that's what you're selling. Yeah, you're selling a candy bar that just has some more protein. So, you, and and you're selling it as a health supplement. So I, I wonder if the origin of that message really came from that. Now, I know the uh, IIFYM thing came from the yeah. bodybuilding uh, community and the and the forums back in the days. That's where it started as far as macro counting and stuff. But I feel like the the big push on the a calories, a calorie, and, and, and that message, I bet the origin is, is connected somehow to the supplement. Well, industry. just to give you an example, you could get a Baby Ruth bar. I looked that one up because that was my favorite. <laughs> I know you guys don't like it. We've talked about this, yeah. but you could get a baby Ruth bar, add 10 grams of protein from soy isolate or non-fat dry milk powder or something like that, right? Something that tastes Create good. a nougat out of and it. And you have yeah. a high protein bar. Just yeah. add 10, 10, 10 grams. It gives it 13 grams because it already has three yeah. from the peanuts. Add 10 grams. Technically, it's a high protein. That's how you could label it. Yep. Bar. And you change nothing else. Mm -hmm. And I bet if I did that, it would taste pretty damn close to what it normally would taste like. Sure. And it would be a bestseller. I mean, that's what you see. Yeah. Your, your most popular bars and stuff like that are the ones the that, ta ones. that taste the best. Yeah, everybody knows yeah. that. And when you flip the... the, the well, what a lot of people don't know, though, is if you actually flip that around next to a Baby Ruth or a Snickers, pretty close. how close all the <laughs> stuff is. You macros, are, you're yeah. reading the label. And you're so like, what oh, you're saying is shit. we should be eating candy bars. Yeah. Yeah. That's how yeah. some people are going to hear this right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. dip it in whey protein. They're down. I drink a shake with my candy bars. I mean, it's really... Idea, Justin. Yeah. The way that I've For always sure. positioned, you know, shakes and bars is that it's a last resort. Like it's not that I am I'm demonizing it, right? Because there's always that, right? I can't talk negatively about it. Then all of a sudden I'm demon. No, I'm not demonizing it. I'm not saying I I don't utilize bars and shakes. I had a bar yesterday, right? So, but I I think that you look at it like in in the manner of like this is not ideal. Ideally, instead mm -hmm. of me eating that bar yesterday, I would have had a balanced meal. I had one of my daily dose meals. That would have been a better choice. Yep in that moment and I recognize that mm -hmm. it's okay to just be like but it was convenient it was fast we had to hurry up and podcast so I didn't have the time to do all the other stuff so okay understandable but I think that it's been promoted and sold as a health and health supplement so hard that people think they're doing a good job by having that and then that justifies that happening more and more and then now their best food they eat for the day is shakes and bars yep. and then the rest of it's like totally. not, not even great choices. All right. I want to tell you guys something I've been doing. I haven't told you guys about, but I've been coming in. I come in the morning and work out and I've been do doing it more here because our editing team will work out in the morning. It's a great vibe. In fact, this morning was so awesome. I walk in, music's cranking. Everybody's working out and in between sets, people are talking shit, yelling at each other. <laughs> it was so awesome. I, I brought you back it. to some gym days. Oh yeah. man, I loved it. It was so great. But anyway, I'll come in early sometimes and I'll do, because we have the red light, the juve pl uh, panels in there. Yeah, yeah. And I'll do f like five minutes, five to seven minutes, uh, and I'll just look at it straight ahead, do the front of my body, and I just 
I just like, I'm here. Let me just do this. I might as well see what happens. Bro, the skin on my face. Yeah. And it is like, it, it's pretty wild. Yeah. Like it's like even things I know, out. I notice it the, 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 right after you do it the first time. That's again one of those why I think that 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 product is does so well is that it's it's hard to deny the difference. You'll hear it from somebody else for sure if you have a hard. time It literally it does feel like my skin's getting younger. Yeah. Is how it feels. What I really want you to do uh, with it because you and Doug are the most consistent right now with Jay Campbell's hair product. I know everybody. Oh, combine it. With I know them. everybody wants me too because I'm the ball guy, but I happen to be the ball guy who doesn't give a fuck and also is like, <laughs> you know, kind of likes it. So. Uh, you guys, if you're That's doing called that, reframing everyone. What, <laughs> so <laughs> one, of, it. one of the things I did notice when we first got introduced to the juve light as a side effect, because I used to sit, I used to sit like this and like in, in front of the light yeah. and it, I started to feel some of my hair yeah. come back. And so that combined with that product, I would love, I'm to, going to, I'm using just the hair peptide by itself okay. to continue to gauge it. Okay. And then I'm going to do both, but yeah. I don't want to do both at the same time. Cause I don't know which one to give Look, the credit that's fair. to. That's fair. But I, I definitely know. think that that's going to supercharge it. I bet you're going to see a difference from that. Cause I, uh, as a side effect, noticed that. And it wasn't even something that I was trying to do. I remember that's what led to you finding yeah. the research. Cause I remember saying, I'd be like, you know, it feels yeah. weird. Like it feels like my, my hair feels thicker. I have little stubs that are growing. All right. that. I'm excited. I'm going to yeah. go, I'm going to go another three to four months and then I'll do that. So okay, I'll let sweet. you guys know. Okay. Hey, quick shout out. Uh, I hope you guys don't mind. I want to shout out my comp my cousin owns a company that he just founded and I want to just give it a, a little shout out so people could check this out. We're not going to go into too much detail because we will later on, but he has created a, this is a very disruptive tech company. My cousin Alessandro is a brilliant young man. Love him. You can set yourself up with a trust. Okay. So if you have a family, you're a new parent, you got to do this because if you die, all your shit goes to the state, it goes to probate, and then it costs money and months mm -hmm. for the state and the lawyers to figure out where everything goes. Whereas if you have a trust, it just boom, right away. No money lost, no nothing. Um, normally to get a trust, it costs you thousands of dollars, you gotta go through a lawyer. There's all these archaic ass laws. Yep. He figured a way <laughs> to go around these laws to use robo signing, and it's all legit, it's all legal. You can get a free trust. You can go online. For free? Free. Wow. You can get a free trust. It's getdynasty.com. So I'm not going to say too much more. If you just want to check it out, we'll do future episodes and kind of break it down a little bit and talk a little bit. But you can go get- Super get disruptive, man. That's very, awesome. yeah. this is Uber yeah. for that whole space. So are That's they- exciting. On the website, I haven't been to the website yet. Is it, does he have like a video? And a, yeah, and, just go on there. You set oh, up. Okay. Get, oh. di get dynasty com, And that's owned again by my company, by oh. my cousin, sorry. Very cool. Okay, so Joy Mode is a natural product that looks to improve blood flow through the entire body. Now, what does that also mean? Better sexual performance. All of the ingredients in Joy Mode are backed by real data to help vasodilate, open the blood vessels, improve blood flow, thus improving sexual quality. Go check them out. Go to usejoymode.com forward slash mind pump, then use the code mind pump at checkout for 20% off your first order. All right, back to the show. First question is from C. Fevers. What is the relationship between building muscle and testosterone levels, particularly in women? If a woman has already experienced issues with other hormonal imbalances, can building muscle cause an abnormal increase in testosterone levels? Ah, that's a great, that's a really, really great question because we talk all the time about how building muscle, especially in men, helps raise testosterone. So mm -hmm. let me explain this a little bit better so people understand kind of what's going on and why the process of building muscle would not cause an imbalance or an abnormal, what would be an imbalance, abnormal increase in testosterone levels uh, in women. When you send the muscle building signal through strength training and you feed yourself appropriately, because you have to have the nutrients there to support that, and the rest of your life uh, also fits that. In other words, you're not overstressed, not getting enough sleep, you know, all that stuff. Like everything's working okay, and you send a signal to build muscle. Your body organizes its hormones in the way to do that. Now, the hormone profile that does that is a balanced one. Yeah. So in men, that often means a higher testosterone level. Sometimes it means that in women too. But abnormally high testosterone levels in women 
is a side effect of imbalances in other places. Oftentimes, what you see with that are insulin resistance uh, or uh, estrogen or progesterone imbalances. So if you're a woman and you have abnormally high testosterone, that's not because your body's trying to build more muscle. It's a compensatory, compensatory pattern that comes from other imbalances. So the strength training, along with the other stuff that I, help I mentioned, balance it. balances yeah. it out. Right. And you'll get the other hormones to balance themselves out, and then you probably won't have the side effects of abnormally high testosterone levels, which is relatively rare, by the way, in women. Yeah. But again, it's a side effect uh, it's not a, this is my body just trying to build. So I'm muscle. confused a little bit. So the, the concern this person has is that if they, they've already had hormonal imbalance issues, yeah, is it, if she starts to lift weights, because we've talked about how that could increase testosterone, right. product, like if that's actually going to throw her balance off more. Right. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. No, the opposite is that's true. Right. Right. Yeah, it's that's only right. going to organize it and make it better. That's so. right. Because yes, testosterone is a driver of muscle right. building, but there's also insulin, that plays a role. There's growth hormone that plays a role. Estrogen and progesterone indirectly uh, play a role. Cortisol balance plays a role. So really, it's the it's the symphony of all these hormones working in a in a great way that tells your body to build more muscle. Now, it, yes, you could artificially jack testosterone up so high through synthetic it, yeah administering testosterone yeah. or anabolic steroids which is totally different which mm -hmm. is very different and yes that will cause you to build muscle like you could take a woman i could quadruple her testosterone and yeah she'll build more muscle from it but also start to masculinize and get a bunch of weird side effects right. but in from a normal natural perspective the process of strength training is one of the most effective ways to balance out your hormones when I would work with female clients with hormone imbalances uh, and I'd work with their functional medicine practitioners, the form of exercise that they were always like, oh yeah, keep doing that or focus on, was always strength training, always. Yeah. It always would produce the most beneficial effects, even when women were overstressed. So lots of times women have hormone imbalances because of too much stress, lack of sleep. The form of exercise that I still had to, that I still applied, however, quite precisely and gently, was still strength training. Mm -hmm. So no, you're not going to get an abnormal hormone profile for strength training unless you're doing it in a completely inappropriate way. You're overtraining yourself, overstressing yourself, not feeding yourself properly, in which case it can contribute to uh, to hormone imbalances. Next question is from Jay Busath. How do I know when I have enough muscle to cut so I don't end up looking skitty, oh, skinny? That's a good question. I don't think it would be so much of a measuring lean body mass as it would be measuring your strength. I think that's more, that's a better metric to measure. I, I like even better metric than that as I like focusing on your metabolism. So instead, I like going, I, when I'm pushing someone to build muscle, like a client, male or female, and it's like, okay, how long are we going to be in this quote unquote bulk or reverse diet before we get to cut down and get shredded or go the other direction? And I normally say, well, let's get it to a place where you're eating so much food that you are you don't want to eat anymore. Yeah. To me, that's a, a, a better gauge is like, let's keep increasing calories and building muscle so long as you feel like you comfortably can keep adding calories to the diet until you get to a place where it's like, man, that's a lot of food. That's hard for me to hit that number. Like, oh, what a great place to be. Now let's go the opposite direction and let's lean out versus some, you know, arbitrary, you know, number of body fat percentage or pounds of muscle on your, yeah, on it seems your body. a little more subjective that way in terms of like, if I, if I have this much muscle mass, now it's time for me to cut versus like, I, yeah, if I can increase my calories and I can get to that place where it feels like work, you know, to be able to scale down, it's gonna be a lot easier. Uh, and you're going to get all the benefit and result of like, you know, losing weight, losing body fat, uh, in a comfortable place where you're eating. Yeah. I just think also to the whole, like, um, you know, I don't want to look skinny. I mean, you probably would be a better way uh, to say that is I don't want to look or feel frail or look or feel weak uh, or lose, I guess, function or mobility, which can happen if you just go too low calories. Um, you know, that's why I said strength as well. I think in combination, what you guys yeah, are saying would be great. Because sure. if like, if you're, if you've like doubled your strength um, in a lot of key lifts uh, and, and you feel solid, you feel strong, like let's say you're a woman and you could squat your body weight or you're a man and you could squat one and a half times your body weight or something like that, right? Um, and then you feel comfortable. Like, okay, I think I can go on a cut 
And then you can continue monitoring the strength. Because if I go from being able to squat 200 pounds for 10 reps, and then I go on a cut, I should expect some strength to go down. But if it goes from 200 to 100, uh, then I'm probably cutting too much or I'm too aggressive with the calorie cut or I'm, I'm not doing things right, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, if I can relatively maintain my strength, maybe lose a little bit depending on how advanced I am in a cut, I'm doing okay. I think I'm doing fine. That's usually how I would, that's how I used to gauge it for myself at least. You, you also have this ability to say you, you know, you're, you're building muscle, say for a month or two and you've been on this consistent, you know, reverse diet or bulk, right? Same difference. And you're like, okay, I, I wonder, is this enough muscle to keep on my body that when I lean out, I'm not going to look skinny and I'm still going to have this, then, then start to cut, go yeah. the opposite direction and pay attention. If you start to feel like, oh my God, I don't like how much I'm losing or how, how skinny I now look, you can go back the other direction. I just be careful of getting so focused on how we look. Cause a lot of times your mind plays a lot of games with you. Like one of the things that always kept me from getting stage shredded was my insecurity around being skinny, like this question and being small. And so I never would allow myself to push that yeah. far. I would start to lean out and go, Oh my God, I'm losing all my muscle. Like I don't, I'm looking skinny. And I would say things like that to myself. And then I'd bro, pack back the calories back on because I was so insecure about being skinny. So just be careful of, you know, tying your, your results or your goals to like this, this, this skinny look that you're, you potentially are subjective. afraid of. Yeah, it is too subjective. And you're actually not the best person to judge that a lot of times. A lot of times it, like, if it's, if you were driven like I was to get muscular and buff by my insecurity of being skinny, then a lot of times that will play mind games with you that, you know, you're low calorie, you're deflated a little bit. So your muscle bellies aren't yeah. filled up. So you think you're getting skinny when in reality, well, it's no, you just, you have you have low calorie, and then when you're low calorie, the muscle bellies aren't going to be filled out as much, and so it gives you this illusion of you look flat or skinnier, or it looks like you're losing muscle, but in reality, you're not. You're just low low calorie, and your body is actually burning and breaking down body fat. Next question is from Outback Danes: Should you reverse diet if you're over thirty percent body fat? So a reverse diet, for people who don't know, a reverse diet is the process of slowly increasing calories in combination with proper strength training strength to training, speed yeah. up the metabolism so that later on you could set yourself up to go on a calorie cut from a higher place so that you don't end up with such low calories that it's hard to sustain. Okay. So that's what a reverse diet is. In other words, a reverse diet is not about losing body fat. It's about setting yourself up so you could lose body fat in the future in a month, two months, whatever. Uh, in a more sustainable way. So then if we understand that, the question really has nothing to do with what body fat percentage you're at. It has everything to do with how many calories you can consume now uh, and maintain your body weight and what it takes for you to lose weight. Mm -hmm. If that number is so low that you're like, this is unsustainable. Like if I need to eat a thousand calories a day to lose weight, it doesn't matter what body fat percentage I'm at. I, I know that that's just unsustainable. So I'm going to reverse diet. I'm going to try and get myself to a place where I can cut from. Um, that's it. That's just the bottom line. So it really doesn't matter what body fat percentage you're at. Look, you could be a guy at 10% body fat and you could come tell me, I'm 10%, Sal. I'm going to get to 5% body fat. And I'd say, well, how many calories are you eating now? Yeah. 1,800. Okay, let's reverse diet you because where are we going to end up when we get down to 5% in a place that's so unsustainable, it's going to put you in a, in a bad position. So it has really nothing to do with body fat percentage and everything to do with, uh, you yeah, know, to me, it has a lot sustain. more to do with where you're currently at in your journey and That's diet it. at the time. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you are like, you came to me, right. And I, and you were just about to get started on your, your fitness journey and we measured your body fat and you're 30%. And then I assessed where your calories and your diet was, uh, 99% of the time when a client that was overweight. Okay. This is later in my career, not talking about the beginning of my career when I hadn't figured this out yet. Uh, every client that would come in that wanted to lose, uh, body fat or lose weight uh, when I first started them was a reverse diet. It was, and it was, and it, for a lot of different reasons, uh, it, psychologically, it blows their mind because they're like, wait a second, I need to lose 30, 40 pounds of fat. And you're telling me you want me to eat more of these foods. And it's like, yes, because well, what you alluded to earlier is that I want to set you up for long-term success. And what that looks like is building some muscle on your body as a priority versus just getting weight off the scale. 
if I if I prioritize building muscle, I'm going to speed your metabolism up to where your body will naturally burn more calories, which in turn is going to make you getting leaner so much easier versus saying, hey, you just hired me. You're at 30% body fat. You want to cut and lean out. Okay, well, let me assess your calories. Oh, your calories at 2,000 calories. Okay, let's cut to 1,500. And then we play that game because eventually you'll get to the what you were saying, which is only eating 1,000 calories, still not where I, you want to be your I goal. I think it's important to say that losing weight is not the challenge. It just isn't. If you look at the numbers and the data, losing weight is not the- Millions the, of people do it every year. Yeah, every year. It's the keeping it off that is the challenge. Right. So what you should be concerned with when you want to start losing weight is not, can I lose the weight? It's, can I keep it off? How can and, I keep going with this? And then focus on creating a way to make it sustainable. Reverse dieting is a part of- that process. So it's not a part of the weight loss process. It's a part of uh, setting this up so I can do it forever process, which is far more important. <clears throat> Next question is from Justin Lifts Weights. What is the best protein for a budget bulk? Budget bulk. So we're going to talk about whole foods, obviously. Ground beef. Yeah. I yeah. mean, ground beef. A, a, a value pack of ground beef yeah. Yeah. is inexpensive. A value pack of frozen Chicken thighs is inexpensive. I, I also sure. want to point out this. When, when someone says uh, words a question like this, this is where you're going to hear like conflicting things from us or different stuff, right? Like I'm I'm going to promote uh, something like butcher box and grass-fed beef because I think it's a better choice for you. But if I had somebody who is broke or yeah. struggling to pay their bills and they're like, Adam, I also want to get in shape, but you know, grass-fed beef is really expensive. Like I, I don't care. I, at that point, like we'll we'll later in life we'll get to getting better at making those you know organic choices. So that there is a hierarchy of what's most important, and you eating a balanced meal uh, that's macro friendly. That's ninety five percent of the way. Is is yeah. way more important yes. than you spending an extra three dollars on organic or grass fed yet you're going to hear me promote how important that is. Yeah, it is, but it's, it's, there's still a hierarchy. It's not the most important thing. It's more important that you balance it. So if a, if a person comes to me about budget, I'm going to tell you things like rice and ground beef, like it's going, right. going to be your, right. your staple. Yeah. Value packs are incredible. Tuna fish. Inexpensive. Costco, oh, going yeah. Costco uh, and buying meat and yeah, bulk. Eggs. I know guys have lived off tuna cans yes. and like had that in, in the gym and that was I a go too. For yeah. a long time yeah. like that. Yeah. Eggs, inexpensive. Yeah, cottage eggs cheese, inexpensive. cottage cheese, inexpensive. Milk, inexpensive. There's a myth out there that eating healthy uh, is inexpensive. It's not. It's uh, Excuse me, it's expensive. It's not. It's inexpensive. It's actually quite inexpensive to eat healthy and that's not even counting the saved money in healthcare. And all, I know when people talk about that, I'm not even talking about that. I'm just talking about your total bill. Yeah. You buy ground beef or chicken thighs or tuna fish and eggs and, and, and rice and beans and frozen vegetables, okay, and some fruit in bulk. Look at your bill and all you do is eat that. You never eat out. Okay. You don't ever eat out. You just eat those foods. You'll save money and you'll get fit and you'll get healthy. Yeah. Yeah. So. And there's a bunch of, if you go to the butcher and there's always like a, a meat that they're, they're putting on for sale and there's, it's in bulk and you can always find some, even if it's like organ meat or something like that, like you just, you, you can blend that in with your ground meat and you get a lot more protein. That yeah. Way. I had a family member who's like, they went to, they went to whole foods, right. And they bought steaks for everybody mm -hmm. and they bought the, you know, dry aged, you know, whatever, you know, ribeye. Like, man, I just spent $300 on steaks because it's so expensive to eat healthy. I'm like, where'd you go? And he tells me, I'm like, dude, come on. <laughs> yeah, it's like, bro, yeah, that's the, expensive. The you got, place. yeah, dude, you got yeah. dry aged, whatever cut, you know, at the, at the, I said, if you went to Safeway, yeah, got, or Costco, or exactly. Costco, Costco and got yeah. bulk, like ground beef, like, do you yeah. know how inexpensive that is? And yeah. you get high protein. You'd have you know everything that you're looking for. There's so, definitely yeah, a way to do it. 100%. Yeah. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. They're free and they're awesome. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin, he's on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. 